Hello everyone, this is uh, Dr. Shu Jin Wang. Um, today's video, I am going to continue working on this uh, Chopin Waltz uh, in E flat major, opus 18. Um, in the previous video, we talked about how this is really a, a very good preparation for students who have the ambition to play all the 24 uh, preludes, because how this, um, even in my opinion, um, more difficult than those the, the emotional changes in the preludes because instead of you know having a minute or two to change the mood um, in this case sometimes you have to change to a different mood in 16 measures because another uh, very very interesting characteristics of this piece is that it doesn't matter if Chopin calls it a dance or a waltz um, everything inside the form is very, very square. It's very symmetrical. It's four times four. So you can really count on uh, this 16 measure per section kind of formula. So last time we talked about how the beginning is very happy, very proud. Um, and then after 16 measures, um, you change to something soft and leggero. And making two jokes there. Um, and then, um, well, of course not 16 uh, measures later because the, the previous material was repeated. But then, maybe after uh, 32 measures, or by a double six, really it's, it's a way for the composer to show this warmth of, of the tone. Okay, so right after, that's where I stopped in the previous video, so right after this 16 major phrase we have So what's really interesting uh, things that are happening here is that first of all, Chopin uses this um, trick called hemiola, and that's when we have six beats, so in this case, two measures, because it's a waltz. Uh, in six beats, you can really group three beats together, and then you have two groups, and that's really the majority part in this piece, because it's in three, so you have two measures. But you can also, instead of grouping three beats together, you can group two beats together, and within a six beat uh, two measure time, you can have three groups. So instead of one, two, three, one, two, three, now we have one, two, one, two, one, two. So this is really a kind of a displacement, of course, in a very short um, period of time. But then we very quickly went back to one, two, three, one, two, three, and then one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So really Chopin was really seeking contrast in all forms. So we, we have the contrast of, of um, dynamics, very loud, and then very soft. We have the contrast of grouping, so one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. We also have the contrast in articulation, this we have staccato, now here we have legato. So we can see how um, Chopin was really seeking to the extremes of, of this contrasting uh, effect. And again, this, this lyrical part comes back for another 16 measures, and here we have a new This part is also doubled, and it's also the voice change from soprano range now is more uh, of a, a tenor or, or an alto. And on 
the marking, on the, 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 the dynamic marking, Chopin puts a con anima. And let's not confuse this word with animato, which really means movement or animated. Um, but here, con anima means to play with soul. So this is probably in this whole piece the most, the deepest, the most profound, um, the most um, kind of deeper feeling. Uh, of, of this whole piece, so... And then after four measures, which really convinces me to, to think this really is another question and answer where two characters come having a dialogue. So everything is staccato and everything has this very, very quick grace note. And of course, it's kind of a silly uh, chromatic scale. And in order to bring the contrast in tone, because obviously we can't do too much with tempo, so here. as the flash possible so that instead of doing quick attacks this is all pressing it's all very slow attacks but very deep and here um, instead of using fingers I would say we are playing with our arm and here instead of using arm we're using fingers so uh, when we practice this uh, not only that we should practice how to change our mood we also have to practice how to change our techniques how different parts of the body is being applied when we play uh, different parts um, again this lasted for 60 measures and then this this very uh, serious part comes back for another 60 measures and another new material. And again, it's four plus four, um, and Chopin just put Dolce, so it's very, very sweet. But then something quite um, unique about this part is that the first two measures al always have this parabin. Um, so basically when the composer put some words or some dynamic parts into a section, uh, the composer really meant for us to you know, pay attention to this, something special is happening. So... And then the next two measures, there's no dynamic. So almost this is like somebody asking a question and somebody answers and pretending to be nonchalant. So I, I don't really care. Asking a question at the end and then So one thing interesting, the piece starts with three flats, E flat major, and, and how Chopin switches keys 
for different characters, it really is something genius and something very simple. So E flat major, you just add a seventh E flat, so this becomes a five seven low A flat, and then so we have four flats now. And A flat instead of the four, we have a seventh, and then we have D flat. So um, and uh, as the piece or as music gets more and more serious and darker and darker, you, you Chopin kept adding flats. Uh, so from three to four to five, and of course eventually we come back to this uh, heroic opening. Um, and towards the coda, right before the coda starts, um, Chopin did something he doesn't very often do, but uh, of course I guess learning from Beethoven, he was really um, using rest as a means of expression. So if for anybody who heard this the first time, uh, if, a con if a, a performer plays like that, it almost sounded like it was an accident. Yeah, the performer doesn't know what's the next note or something happened uh, because it's just really a very abrupt uh, interruption. And then you stay actually for seven beats. So, I mean, of course, a lot of people, <laughs> for the dramatic effect, do it even longer. And then you realize, oh, okay, so it's planned. But still, leaving this question unanswered, it's not resolved. We all know this dominant seven need to go to E flat, right? But then for another entire measure of silence, this coda starts, and of course it doesn't start with with a full chord, but with a single note. And what's really interesting here, uh, Chopin put a tempo, meaning going back to the original tempo. But then we all know for dance, uh, for especially for waltz, it has a great deal of flexibility. If you listen to the New Year's concert by. Vienna Philharmonic, they, they never do one, two, three, straight counting. It's one, two, three, one, two, three. It's that they, they make one of the beat much longer. And of course, we, we want to apply that when we play uh, the previous parts um, of this. So, um, especially when we have this. For us to to play with. However, the beginning of the coda, in my opinion, we should have very very strict counting because, in a way, strict counting makes the audience quite nervous. They know something is coming, but of course we're going from pianissimo. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that could also be the end of the piece. 
and of course no played again by the composer. <laughs> but maybe seven or eight different kind of mood or atmosphere was giving and we have to not only practice how we change the mood when we practice when we play the piece we have to also learn how to change our technique to change our approach to the sound or the tone when we play this and again um, it is really a lot of fun to practice to, to play this piece to perform this piece and in my opinion, it's really a, a wonderful uh, exercise for changing mood um, and it's a good preparation for people who want to do the preludes as a whole set. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Um, I will teach something different in the next episode.